What's happening, man? Before we start, before we start, uh oh, uh oh, what's going on with you? Oh, you know, just living, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm gonna tell you, this is my first episode in almost like a month because we moved to a new studio, so I'm in a brand new studio right now, and uh, been switching up things and. What a way to start it. Don't even have the uh, SM card in the mixer. So <laughs> let's go ahead and put that in. And while you guys are watching, make sure to like and subscribe. And ones and twos podcast. Shouts out to DJ K, man. It's going to be fun. I'm already ready. Boy, that was quick and easy. Now, then we press the record button, and then we get it popping right here. Then we start with the little hand claps over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Got to show a little to the artist. God bold music. My bad. I've been saying your name wrong for a minute. And is it pronounced God bold? Yeah, that's it. That's my so crazy story. I know we're gonna get into story time, but that's actually my last name. God bold. Okay. So I was just like, I wanted to be God bold, but somebody had already like taken that name on Spotify and Apple and all that. So I was just like, all right, well, I'll be God bold music. I don't care, man. It's still okay. <laughs> so Okay. That's what's up because I thought when I I first met you at the show with Lou Charles, and I saw your name on the flyer. I was like, okay, this dude, the he Kanye. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, this nigga, the he Kanye. I yeah. fuck with it, though, because when I heard you sing, I'm like, okay, this dude could be R&B Kanye. You know, he got talent. I see, man. But now you tell me it's like your real name. I'm like, okay, that's what's up. Um, man, that's crazy. So where are you from, exactly? So I was, it was this is going to be a long story, but I'm going to try to make it short. I was born in Irving, Irving, Texas, DFW, yeah. place. Like, that's my home. That's why I can't leave this place. But uh, I spent a lot of time in KC, KC Mo, to be specific. Sorry, Kansas people, but Missouri, yeah. the better side of the, the better side of the city. Um, okay. But, yeah, so that's why I'm a big Chiefs fan, big uh, Royals fan. That's, those are my squads, man. I represent when we 2-14 and 14 or 14-2. 14 and two, It don't matter to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Irving. So is that where you got your music started in Irving? No, actually, uh, really was Fort Worth, man. Um, okay. Really where people were just like, hey, you should do this. Like, get out of your own way and make this happen, you know? Like, my wife's yeah. a supporter of me, man. She was just like, I don't know why you waiting any longer to do this. You've been singing your whole life. You do this, you do that, you write. Like, why not just give it a shot? Yeah. And after, like, a year of coaxing, <laughs> I was like, all right, uh, I'll go ahead and give it a try. And here we are now. So you said after about a year. So, like, what what year did you start taking the music seriously? Uh, December of 2019, to be specific. Dang, right. are you serious, bro? Like, you knew, knew. Yeah, no, for But real. you've been obviously singing for a long time, though. Yeah, for Obviously, for, for, for you know, because, like yeah, because the type of voice you got, man, you don't, that just don't happen overnight, you know what I mean? You could be born with that, but you have it to where you practice. I can already tell. Yeah, but 2019, that. taking it seriously? Okay, that's pretty yeah. recent. So... You actually got started off like kind of on a bad year because 2019, if you just kicking off 2020 hits, you know, you kind of got hit bad with all the shows being closed off and stuff yeah. like that. So, but now they open, you know, for the most right, part, right. I guess. But man, that's crazy. And you know what else I like is I like talking to artists who, you said you're married. Yes, sir. I like talking to artists who are married and doing the music because I feel like a lot of musicians, DJs especially, producers they feel like they can't wife get a you know have a wife and do the music at the same time they're like oh i got i got the wife now the music's just stop i'm like no that's not true because talk, i'm talking to you and then there was another artist i talked to on one of my other episodes mary got kids and they're doing the music i'm like yeah. what are y'all talking about bro yeah i mean it's harder i will tell you that it is definitely harder man it's yeah a bunch of different variables especially depending on like your level of exposure like when you somebody who's who's fairly new, yeah, like you don't get that same level of exposure. But I'm sure like people who've been at it for a minute, and then it's like, oh, let me go ahead and lock something down, or they've been married and then they give it a shot. Yeah, so it's a I, I can speak from personal experience that it's a little bit harder in that in that regard, just because of the simple fact that like it's a whole different perspective of your life. You got to give up so much of your time, and your people need your time. You know, your family, your wife, your kids, the people like that need, need your time. And when you got to devote it and your energy like to a completely different thing because you're chasing your dream. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it can be a thing, you know what I'm saying? But it's lu I'm lucky enough to have a supporting cast that actually wants me to do this and they think it's cool that I do this, you know? And yeah. 
as long as I'm doing the right things with it, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, yeah. I see why they support you because you're actually talented. And I'm not just Thank saying that to be like, oh, man, you talented. Because I've had artists on here that I flat out told them they need to just do better. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, that's how I got good as a DJ, man. They said, DJ can your shit suck. Do better. Okay, do better. <laughs> and I got better. So, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, if y'all see some of the episodes, y'all y'all know the, yeah. But anyway, we'll get into that later. But, uh, I mean, you actually talented, bro. Like, you're really good. And I'm not trying to compare your voice to nobody else. By the way, if y'all haven't noticed, this dude got <laughs> records. He's only been in the game since 2019, but he got four, is it four singles? Four singles right now, dropping one a month for the foreseeable future. So, tap Yeah. In. So, he got four normal. singles. Oh, yeah, definitely tap. He got four singles, and that Promise record is definitely hitting hard, bro. Uh, before I talk about that, I just want to talk about when we first met. I met you at Fort Worth. Uh, Shouts out Lou Charles. Uh, and you were opening up for him, and I didn't even see you get on the stage, bro. But when I heard you, that's when I looked at the stage. I was like, who is – like, I thought it was a recording, and it was actually you singing, bro. I was getting some pizza, drinking a beer or something, and I was like, bro, like, you know, I was looking at like, who is this singing? I was like, yo, bro, and I'm going to say, you probably heard this before, but I was like, I thought that was Ursher. I'm dead. <laughs> no, I yeah, I was like, bro, I thought that was Ursher. <laughs> yeah, I was like, bro, this dude sound like, I'm again, I'm not trying to compare you and everything, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But I was like, bro, he got a good voice. And I was like, hold on, let me put this pizza down real quick and let's listen to our boy sing real quick. Let's go and listen. I was like, yeah, I was very, very, uh, very impressed, man, to say the least, you know what I'm saying? So what... Um, <laughs> And I don't know, did I already ask you, like, what made you even want to get into music? Like, what was your inspiration to even start doing that? No, you didn't. But, I mean, I can answer that. Um, to be totally honest with you, it's just, it's something I'd always done. And I always yeah. there was a piece of me that wasn't really complete because I wasn't actually doing what I knew I should be doing. And yeah. I would never push that because I'm one of those people that's just like, man, I'll work whatever job I need to to get by to make sure I got a roof over my head and food, food and clothes for my family. Man. Like, that's, like, that's what's most important to me. And it's, it's always been that way. And so mm -hmm. making sure that that stuff was good was giving me a, an excuse, a scapegoat to, to not pursue, not to take my money and my time and stuff like that and pursue this music thing because it does take a lot of money and a lot of time. Like, let's be yeah. real. Everybody that's watching as an artist, this takes money and it takes time. Mm -hmm. Don't ever think anything different. Um, yes. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, so it, just, it, it was just one of those scenarios where like it was, it, w it was long overdue. And so I ended up, long story short, there was this like uh, community of creatives uh, called Axel. Shouts out to Axel, shouts out to Mercy Culture. They're the ones that kind of put that whole thing on. Jasmine Tate specifically, who's the person mm -hmm. that runs all that. Um, like I met her at one of these creative nights and she was just like, all right, I'll sow a seed. Like, what's up? They put me, yeah. put me up with uh, Ishmael Moody, a producer out of Dallas. Shouts out mm -hmm. to Ish. Um, and pay for my first session. I knocked out my first song in that. That's on SoundCloud, by the way. I got stuff on SoundCloud, a whole mixtape, actually two whole mixtapes on there. So if you, okay. if you like the underground stuff, go check that out too. I do a little bit more rapping on that stuff than I, than I do on the stuff that I actually put out to kind of find my niche. Right, so, right. Um, but yeah, man, she sowed the seed and that's, it kind of took off from there, man. I recorded that song in, in January, put out that, uh, put out that two song mixtape and I want to say, the end of January or the beginning of February of uh, of 2020. Okay. Before COVID popped uh, off, and then yeah. oh, here we are. So. Oh yeah, put them put them people on do not disturb. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I know because that because. Yeah, if he sound like you got you in a barbershop over there, I'm like, oh, we hear artists and you got a barbershop too? Because you hear like the, eh, eh. I'm like, okay, they cut hair in the studio too. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> D and D is now on. I, I love y'all, but y'all got to wait for a minute. Y'all want to talk to me? Come talk to me in here. Yeah, uh, but bro, that's that's so cool that you got records out. And, you know, it's all about getting those connections. Like you said, it's, you know, everybody puts on different shows and everything else. And it's all about connecting with those dis uh -huh. different people to get put on. But um, so Fort Worth, and I think I've asked Eric Evan this, maybe Lou Charles this, but what do you think about the scene in Fort Worth? Like, what's your opinion about it? Is it, is it, is it busting? Is it almost uh, there? Uh, you going to put me on the spot here. All right, check it it's, out. So, oh, yeah, we do it. It's oh, nitty gritty over here. So I'll be totally transparent. Um, it's blatantly obvious that. I'm black. We both black. We know how it go. We, we oh, love yeah. hip hop, R&B, stuff like that. 
exactly. And <laughs> I will say that there are only a certain amount of people within the actual like movers and shakers of Fort Worth who really want to see hip hop and R&B shows and yeah. showcases and the culture and everything like that within Fort Worth. Uh -huh. and I'm not afraid to say that by any means. Like uh, I talked to Lou about this stuff pretty much every other time we talk. Like that's, that's a big thing. You got to yeah. have people that want to see what you're doing actually be in the city and be prominent and be on the face. You know, I know Fort Worth is Cowtown. I know it's a big country music type situation. I know there's some pop people, there's some rock people, but like there's some great hip hop and R&B artists that are in Fort Worth that are just not getting the shine because mm -hmm. they either have to play in places that really don't want them there or they have to be part of a large ticket just for yeah. somebody to make some money. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's like, you know, you said there's a lot of talent in the, in the rap, and I'm going to be transparent also, man. A lot of the rap I heard in Fort Worth is that murder worse shit, bro. I wouldn't put that shit on anyway. I'm just being dead honest. Like, it's right. like the stuff that you, Lou Charles, and them do, I feel like that's real hip-hop. That's yeah. the stuff that I want to see that needs to be showcased. That murder worse shit, that uh go yeah yo whatever yeah ain't nobody trying to know that bullshit yeah but, i mean uh, this was popular, though. you gotta think about it people want to get on the track and they want to talk about what uh percocet molly percocet like come on yeah man. no shade thing, future that's my dog and everything but like, yeah that's, future not really doing that shit that's the weird thing about it he's an actor i'm i'm not trying to talk yes. down on future but there's been multiple interviews where they're like so what's in your cup today he's like huh, orange juice Oh, with lean? No, orange juice. Like, I don't drink that shit. That like, how you know so much about it? It's like, because the people around me do it, but I don't do that shit. But they like having fun doing it, so I make the music for them to have fun to. And I'm just like, okay, this dude, he's a he's a businessman, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I feel like that type of music, that, that hip-hop that is popular and stuff, I feel like it's cool, but I don't see any longevity in it. I think it's dope. The stuff you're doing, man, is like, classic type music you know what i mean like that's real talent all this other murder work shit it's fun i dj some of that stuff i spent some of those records but man it's his own after about 10 minutes of hearing that shit i'm ready to turn that shit off bro <laughs> i keep it real bro speaking about you know turning the shit off or whatever i i guess i could make this a good segue you're an r&b artist but you mentioned you rap yes, sir. but i mean what do you consider yourself like an r&b or just like an artist I'm just an artist, man. Like, I, I, so I got this this phrase that kind of started this whole thing. Like back in December, like I was when I was really thinking about going ahead and putting the wheels in motion for all this. Like, I yeah. just want to be a part of making somebody's favorite song. I don't care mm. what kind of song it is. It's so many genres of music out there that we can all cross into. That a lot of them started from within our culture, within yeah. our roots, and turned yeah, into something know. else. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I will say. There are certain people that do that do certain things better, but I digress. Like when it comes to me, I've always been a singer. I've always been an R&B singer at heart. Most of my favorite artists are R&B singers. And mm -hmm. then as I got older and really started, you know, like writing out my thoughts, writing poetry, writing songs, I was starting to find that it was easy for me to write raps too. Mm -hmm. And then I started incorporating more rap into what I was listening to. And I was like, wait a minute, like there's some people actually talking about some stuff, like Colt. Man, that's my guy. Like, I love J. Cole. Like, the, yeah. stuff he, the stuff that he talks about, the way that he talks about the stuff he talks about, every once in a while he'll sprinkle in some of that, what'd you call it, murder war shit? Like, he'll sprinkle in some of that. Yeah, yeah. But, but for the most part, it's all conscious rap, or it's all about, like, uplifting, or it's all about just really what's going on around, you know, and just being authentic. And I think that that's my biggest thing, is just authenticity is missing from a lot of the stuff that we do. Yeah. And I also think that that's a part of why I took so long before I came out with, with, with my music as a solo artist, because like I was, for lack of a better phrase, like afraid mm -hmm. to expose that side of me. Like that's giving people an in. And I, I usually keep everything pretty close to the chest. So yeah, you know, getting people that in, letting people hear stuff and take it for their own interpretation. Like, damn, what is he going through? Mm. That's a tough place to be. And then you sing it on stage in front of somebody, man. Y yeah. Boy, so... Yeah, yeah, that's man. See, that's that's pretty crazy, man. You mentioned you were scared to show that side, and now you're finally showing it. And uh, I mean, I'm a strong believer in the whole saying, like it's never too late. So I shot my boy DJ C Hunt in the building, um, but you're doing it, and you're doing it well. 
So I was trying to segue to the last part about stuff switching off and dying off R and B. So your overall artist, which is what I like, cause you're good at the rapping and the singing. But as far as the R and B, do you really think that R and B is dead? I ask all my singers this. I just want to know your honest perspective on this because what you're singing, if you guys haven't heard that Promise record, please go check it out right now. We got my boy, God Bold in the building. Make sure to go follow him right now and check out his new record. Link in his bio, Promise. Go check that shit out. Yes, so speaking about R&B, man, do you really think it's dead, bro? Because, I mean, you're singing about being honest with a girl. I don't want to make a promise to you to stick into this relationship for too long. I'm not going to make promises I can't keep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's how much I love you type shit. That's real R&B stuff. Yeah. What I'm hearing on the radio is like, hey, bitch, you got them titties. You got that ass. I got this cash. So drop it real fast. And I'm going to smash. Then I'm going to hit the gas and dash. Yo, you just made a fire ass record right there. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, you know, that's what they be saying, bro. I'm just like, bro. Now, I don't get, I play the records, they fun, but I'm just like, damn, man, y'all gonna, like, email me some R&B shit to bump in? Like, damn, that's why, that's why I be telling folks, man, this is why, oh, man, I'm keeping it nitty-gritty, bro. This is why, well, let me, let me just answer the question. I'm going off on a tangent, man. Do you think R&B's dead? I'm sorry, I'm getting off on my soapbox over here. Uh, to be honest with you, no. No, I don't. I okay. just think it's oversaturated. I think it's oversaturated with the bullshit that you were talking about. Let's be yeah. honest. I think the the people hopping on there and they want to sound commercial. They want yeah. to say the right words. They want to use the right phrases and all that stuff to be able to appeal to the masses. Like, mm. if your music's good, people are going to listen to what you have to say. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, the beat, yeah, that's important. Get you a good beat. Like, stop buying beats off YouTube. Find you a producer that can actually make something <laughs> that you can sound good on and, and do that. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Get that. Then get your content and make your content. Like, if you're a writer, that is like one of the biggest things you could have for yourself because trying to find the right things to sing is going to end up with you singing that crap that's on the radio. Yeah. You, if you have experiences, you have real life experiences, you've got to take those things and actually write that stuff out. It doesn't have to make sense initially. You can put rhymes to it once you're done, but literally just be like, man, how did I feel in this moment? Like that shit broke my heart. All right. That shit broke my heart. Then you mm -hmm. just write in line after line after line until you have a story and you turn it into something and you turn it into something beautiful, man. So Yeah. No, you can't you can't be afraid to be vulnerable in the, in those instances. There are a couple of people that I will admit are actually pretty solid at doing that. But most of those cats have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Like, all, a lot of these new folks, they're not really doing it. Like there's a couple of new people that that I've heard some good songs here and there, but you hear one song and they're gone. And I don't mm. know if that's the industry or if that's them, you know? So yeah, that could be a lot about the industry. Uh, speaking about the industry, man, I mean, would you ever accept a record deal? <laughs> if somebody came here and was like, God bold, um, I like that Promise record, and I'm going to promise you a deal. <laughs> what, what about it? So I will – it's a, it's a two-part two part answer. So long story short, yes, but it has to be the right situation. And that's yeah. the, second the second part to it is, like, I'm not young. Like I'm not a young cat. I'm not in my twenties to where to where like fast money is what's gonna make make it make it make sense to me. What's right. gonna make sense to me is being able to set my people up now and for the future. Yeah. And if I can't do that with the kind of deal that I have, yeah. if I ain't got no, you know, um, like my publishing ain't right or anything along those lines, or like owning masters or owning part of the creative process or any of that or some opportunity to do that. Yeah. Let them three sixty deals they talk about. Yeah. Don't, don't think twice about catching gobble and, and something like that. Like that's not, yeah, that's not the way that it will work. So if somebody came to me, one of these big labels or something like that, and was, and was like, hey, like we see what you're doing, we see who you are as well. Let's yeah. work. We can make it work, but I'm not. Yeah. Looking at that. yeah, I think yeah, I I would honestly say just take it regardless because you can leverage it. Like you say, you're not a young, you're young, but you're not like you know a child in this game. You mature. Like that's why I think. That could be a, a reason why R and B did die off because of the labels, like you said about a few artists that re would release an authentic song. The next thing you know, it's like you never hear that type of music again. You know what I mean? Like they pick them up off of SoundCloud. Now they're making booty shaking records for the rest of their career. Yeah. Uh, we want a we want a mill. Yeah, we want a mill. Um, but I feel like I feel like uh, when it comes to the three sixty stuff, I feel like it's just people don't read their contracts, bro. I mean, because you clearly, if you, if there's something in the contract that wasn't 
that they lied about, then you can easily dispute it and get your money back. But they never do because nobody lied. It's right. just people weren't responsible. So, I mean, man, I hope you get signed, bro, because I feel like I want to hear more of your type of music on the radio. But um, because I know a lot of folks try to do the independent thing. And what folks don't understand is like what we mentioned earlier is like this music thing costs a lot of money. It's not cheap. Marketing is expensive. It's almost like you're pouring money in a craft that's not gar- not going to guarantee you income yet unless you start really signing deals. You know what I'm saying? Like even as a DJ, like unless you sign a residency deals, wedding contracts, all that, you're not getting no money, at, you know, yet. You got to just invest into it to you really, you know, you, you kind of invest into it for yourself because you love the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when the money comes, okay, now we're on a new trail. So, um. So what do you think the future of music would be like? Like, cause you know, right now R and B is like, it's not really dead, but it's kind of like, uh, rap music is kind of taking over the world now, you know? Uh, and yeah, you, I got, mean, you got, you got singers rapping and rap and rappers singing. That's, that's yeah, what's that's on. happening too. And it's just like, even in country music, I'm hearing country songs where they're literally flexing, like, you know, I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I was like, Shout so, out to Kane Brown though, because that boy's a killer. Yeah, that boy is a killer, man. I don't even, I couldn't even put a face with the words, with the voice when I first heard him. I was like, that's Kane Brown. Okay, Kane Brown is a, is a brother. I'm like, all right, <laughs> all right, uh, yeah. So, what do you think the future of music is gonna be like, man? It, it seems like to me, I think it's just gonna be all hip hop. Yeah. What do I you mean- think? That's what that's honestly right now the the state of music is like hip hop is running the world. People want booming bass. They want eight oh eight thing. They like even in country music they want to hear some stuff slapping. It's like okay, but I mean at some <laughs> point you gotta have other emotions in that, you know? Like yeah. your, all your emotions can't be party, 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 go, go, go. I know we live in the world of instant, but sometimes you gotta take a second and like reflect on what's going on around you. Right. And if you don't have like either some real lyrical shit that's gonna do that, or you don't have like a like a singing R and B, whether it be singing country, singing pop, something like that that just makes you stop for a second and say, wait, okay, I get it now. Like, let me take a breath, let me chill, let me let me pay attention to the world around me, starting with my little circle, you know. So, I think right now, hip hop hip hop is definitely running the game. Yeah. I just, gonna take a couple of people to to really like see that there's more that there is an opportunity for 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 real r&b to resurrect because like you know my era r&b and stuff like that was like maxwell donnell jones oh that's my era too we about the same age like john legend like all those cats like those are the dudes who Mm -hmm ultimately were the last like real breed i can even throw tank in there honestly like oh yeah yeah you know, he does some trash too i'm not don't get me started on it. but he does yeah. but he definitely does a lot for keeping r&b alive like these little challenges and stuff that he does where he got people coming back out and doing stuff man so yeah some people with really with really fire voices and fire content in terms of like the music that they're doing r&b wise they yeah have, have you ever heard of avery wilson uh no okay so he's a singer that's a dope name though yeah, dude has like the best voice that I think I've ever heard. Like, dude is incredible. See, but Avery Wilson, okay. But dude doesn't have a platform. Like, he has like little shows and his local scene and all that stuff that he does, and people know him for that. But overall, like, dude doesn't have the the platform on the level that that he should with the la- with the amount of talent that he actually has. Like, dude's got a look, he's got the talent. I'm like, man, why isn't this dude a superstar in R&B? right right person man that's what it's all about we're 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 in the music business and the creation business and all that but when you say that business it's all about relationships you know what i'm saying like it, it, i've been to california atlanta georgia and i've been to like these music festivals and stuff and seen the folks on the lineup and i'm just like you kidding me right <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me like i i pay vip to come back here to hear the special ex- executive stage and there's some fucking artists on here that sound like garbage but they're signed to a record label right they're making you know maybe a good 80k 100k a year off of their music and i'm just like you're kidding me right it's the relationship business then you find out oh that's you know CeeLo's 
ex-wife's cousin, son. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like shit like yeah. that. It's like we we definitely in the relationship business, and I think that's probably why Angry Wilson doesn't have a big platform because – you know, just not the right place at the right time. You know, I think that's for all of us, bro. You know what I mean? So hopefully he gets that. I'm going to check him out, though. But once he gets it, man, <laughs> shit, hopefully he blows up, bro. Um, What are you uh, listening to now as far as R&B? I know, we're, you know, you mentioned some artists earlier, Maxwell and stuff like that, Tank. So I can definitely tell we're from the same era. Okay, um, So who are you listening to now? Like, who do you vibe out to? Or do you just kind of listen to yourself? Oh. So that's that's a that's a good point. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like I I got unreleased heat in my phone yeah. by myself. <laughs> I go in there, I listen to it just shamelessly, man. My kid, my kids know my songs, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So like like having my little son, he three running the room singing, "Let's connect." Babe. I'm like, yeah. yes, sir. That's it. Yeah. So, you know, like um, I just I listen to myself a lot, but it's also because of this of where I am in my journey of being an artist is that I really want to like refine what it is that I'm doing and make sure that I'm putting out the best stuff because I don't want I don't want to ever put something out from this point on or I guess from December of 2019 on that somebody's like that wasn't it bro like yeah. everything needs to be better or at least right there on par with everything else that was out there in my personal opinion that's how I feel yeah I fuck with it man you know what I mean nothing wrong with listening to yourself I do the same thing because it's just I don't know I like are you a fan of yourself? So yeah. that boy Kanye for real. Uh, <laughs> let's talk. Let's you know what? Let, you, let's talk about that. So are you f fucking with Kanye? Man, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. Like even after uh Donda and I'll, I'll I'll get into that. Let me let me let me You know that. Donald Trump was 2016. You still fucking Okay. Let me let me let me get into that. So, okay. <laughs> the, so from a perspective of pure artistry and pure genius, Kanye is always going to be that guy. Yeah. In my opinion, like never going to 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 be overcome by anybody, man. Because dude has that that mental like aptitude and like perseverance and just the like the grit that you need to just be like, man, forget y'all, bro. Like I'm gonna do me. I love Kanye. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's that's the kind of mentality I feel like a lot of people should have without yeah. being arrogant behind it. Now, does he toe that line? Absolutely. Does he go over that line quite a bit? Also, absolutely. But Kanye is one of those people that, like, he has. He's one of those people that kind of started from the bottom. Like he was like, man, like I'm just gonna make beats and yeah. and I'm gonna do this and that. And then on top of that, I'm a all right, I'm gonna play some of my stuff for some, for certain people. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna bring other people along. But all right, now I really want to be a rapper. Now I want to be an artist. Now I want to be a painter. Now I want to whole Sunday service. Now I want to do this. Like he kept elevating his game. Yeah, and I respect it. Now that doesn't mean he's a role model by any means. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't your question. Your question was, am I fucking with Kanye? Absolutely, because I love <laughs> what that man is doing. I can obviously I tell you like him. Yeah. I fuck with him too. You know, I I think uh, he, he's um, you know, and I brought it up because after Donda dropped, a lot of my friends who were even still fucking with Kanye after the uh, Donald Trump and all that, they just dropped off. They're like, yeah, we're not even listening to the album. And well, um, the album was fire. But I, but yeah, I, but if, if you mind me asking, are you of Christian faith? Yes, sir. Okay, so yeah, uh, we keep it nitty gritty over here, y'all. You know what I'm saying? This is the Ones Two's podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe and follow our guest, God Bo. Hey, so hey, like music on all platforms. We we gonna we gonna we gonna you know we we keep it nitty gritty. We kind of go off topic and all that, but we don't care. It's Ones Two's podcast. We got a special guest, God Bo, in the building. Make sure to like and subscribe to both of us, man, and check out his new record, Promise. I promise hey. you, it's a hit. It's a fucking hit, bro. It's a fucking hit. Play for your girl. I promise you she gonna stay. I promise you she gonna stay with you. But uh, that Donda album, bro, a lot of people felt like it was like a stab in the, in, into the, the Christianity community. It's like, bro, you talking about you the Jesus walks guy. Yeah, we kind of forgave you for the you know Donald Trump thing, but you come out with the Christian album. This, I mean, he, he came out with one before, like Jesus is King, right? That was cool. But this Donda one just resonated a lot harder. And to the people out there who who just said it was like not a real Christian album, I think it's not really a it's not a gospel album. Right. It could be Christian. I mean, Lecrae, you know, what I'm saying Trip Lee, they're Christian rappers, but I feel like 
folks need to understand it's like you got to understand his mind. Like he's bringing on Marilyn Manson. Is that his name, Marilyn Manson? Okay, Marilyn Manson and, you know, the baby who beating up women and stuff like that. But people got to understand this, right? If you really read the Bible, some of the apostles were raping people, killing villages. They were like murdering people left and right. Even the dude that was next to Jesus when he was hung on the cross, he was a murderer, bro. And he got sent to heaven in like 30 seconds because he said, I fucked up. Hey, what do I do? He said, hey, just acknowledge I'm whatever. So Kanye West, you got to understand his mind. He's not like us. You know what I'm saying? So Marilyn Manson is not like us. So Marilyn Manson is going to worship God. How do you think he's going to do it? He's going to play guitar. He's going to scream like a rock star. He's not going to get on the organ. It seemed like Shirley Caesar. You know what I mean? Y'all think he's going to sound like Shirley? No, he's going to be rocking out. Jesus! Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what he's going to sound like. That's him. So we all worship differently. So I don't know. That's just my tid tidbit on it, bro. I just think it's just, I like it. I just feel like it's it's a little hard to digest, but I think it's a move in a good direction, though. So, yeah. Um, so, speaking of crazy stuff, Donda, you know, crazy album, what has been, like, your craziest show? Like, just crazy night, you know what I mean? I mean, honestly... Luckily enough, I ain't really had nothing that crazy. Like I okay. have kept my shows pretty, pretty low key, pretty ex pretty exclusive. Like I'm not out here trying to perform everywhere that I can. Like there's got to be some level of anonymity to it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Like I want people to, and I know I butchered that word. My bad. But there's, but there. Yeah, I was about to say, what's that word mean? Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, like people have to like want to see you people have yeah. to want to to be part of that experience like you you've seen me see me perform live and there's people that are probably in this that haven't seen me perform live yeah you have gotten the experience oh and yes 20 minutes set imagine a, a like my own full full-blown show you know oh, or even just one song here and there like it's an experience like i take performing very serious because it's an opportunity yeah you no know? yeah so, i mean but you know what that's a good question Shouts, shouts out to my boy Justin and the uh, DJ Mix Adams on in in the chat there. But uh, his his question was, you know, like crazy good or crazy bad. I guess if we're looking from that from that perspective, I mean, like one of my shows recently was my first one back in KC. Yeah, that was on December third, fourth, one of those two. That was mm -hmm. the first time. So this is the crazy part: the first time that I performed in a city that really kind of groomed me, you know? Yeah, um, okay. So it was crazy because, like, the way everything fell into place was, like, it, it was it was only God. It, it couldn't have been me, you know? Like, yeah. I, I was trying forever to try to set those wheels in motion. Like, I knew the people that ran the place. I, you know, had, got, had gotten a chance to meet other folks that were part of the movers and shakers within that. And, and then I have my uncle, who is an amazing performer himself, who finally just hits me up out of nowhere after I pretty much given up on it and was like, hey, December 4th, what you got going? Mm. I'm like, well, shit, what do I got going, you know? Yeah. And, and, and we we killed it. Like, it was crazy because the love and support that was there was something, like, that I have never experienced in any show that I've done. Like, I've had really good shows before, and this one was just an okay show from a, like, performance perspective from my end like what i felt right but the love and the energy from the environment was something that i've never experienced before like i can imagine seeing all those familiar faces just looking at you like man we remember when you were in like diapers and shit you right you're like on stage like he done grew the dreads out and stuff you know what i'm saying he done grow the facial hair i remember when that boy was still peeing his band man you ever have them the old folks be like uh did you see him at the uh, family reunion and shit and they'd be like <clears throat> boy he don't grow up remember you remember me i was i was your teacher in third grade i used to wipe your butt boy now you over here singing r&b boy yeah, look I at you growing up i'm so proud of you <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's that's yeah. that's a crazy feeling, man. And that's really good that you have a city that supports you like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause let's be honest, it's a lot of folks to see people blowing up or even just elevating and whatever they're doing, and they not really they, you know, they low-key hating. They not really 
supporting like that. And, you know, that mentality has got to change for real. But yeah, when I say crazy, that's what I meant. Like, you know, just something that was like, wow, I can't believe this is happening right now. Like it could be crazy good or crazy bad. So, so you would say that would be like the highest moment in your career so far? I would musically. I would call that probably the single most important show that I've done. Um, like that was definitely a highlight for me in my small career of, of, of performance so far, man. Like I think, yeah. That felt, and then being able to follow that up the the next week, like literally a week later, and perform where you saw me. Shouts out yeah. to Maria and Lou Charles. Don't forget the dollar sign, my guy. Yes, sir. <laughs> but uh, like that was that that was the continuation of the crazy. Like I did one. And then a whole week later, like literally quickest turnaround, boom, I'm back on stage again. Yeah. Everyone just felt like it felt right. Like I had the, I had more confidence than I than than I had in any other shows and any other showcases. Like my yeah. storytelling through my set was exactly what me and me and DJ yeah. Mix I'm situated, man. Like it was And he it, took off the glasses too, y'all. Y'all know that's like his thing I noticed. Yeah. I pay attention. Yes. And so sir. when the glasses come off when he's performing. Uh, shit about to get real. Yeah, so shit gets real. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so I, I like hearing that you're doing this 2019. Like you said, you're not one of these young teenagers or early 20s, you know what I mean? And 2019 is when you really decide to take it seriously. I've been in music since I was like 13, 14, started yeah. taking it seriously when I was like maybe 19 years old and still doing it. But it's like, bro, just never give up. You know what I'm saying? You say you're about to give up and then you get that call. What you doing? You took the opportunity and just annihilated it, man. Like that's fucking dope. Um, what advice would you give to anybody coming into the R&B game? They saw you, let's say they saw you perform. There's like a lot of kids there at that show, man, gobble mom, that guy's dope. I want to be like him. I want to do that. Like what advice would you give to some kid coming up in the game that wants to do what you're doing? Yeah, um, be authentic. Yeah. Um, people can see through your bullshit. Be authentic. Like, be you. Be unapologetically you, whatever that looks like. Um, and then on top of that, just, like, own it. Every opportunity you're given is a gift. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take full advantage of every opportunity that's placed yeah. in front of you, then you're missing a moment. You're going to have a life full of what ifs. And that is the worst feeling in the world where it's like, damn, if I would have just done this, or I would have pushed a little bit harder, or I would have started a little bit sooner. Yeah. Don't have, don't have what ifs. Be authentic. Take advantage of every situation that's in front of you. Yeah. Just do it, you know? Yeah. And like you said, like you said, you were scared to expose that side of you at first. I just don't be scared. What do they say? What's the worst can that, that can happen? They're going to say no. Right. That's the worst thing can happen. You're going to get a yeah. yes. Yeah, you know, and you know, even no is like kind of like no. I I consider no as like not now, right? Yeah, it's not really like nah. It's like nah, not right now, bro. But you in line, but your ticket number hadn't been called yet. Right. But you in the building, you in line. So that's what I saw. Like every most of the gigs I'm playing now, I've been trying to get those shit since I was like in college, yeah, been man. begging and beating the door down. And now it's like stuff is falling into place without me even asking. It's because I already asked. It's yeah. just it wasn't my turn yet. So that's yeah. how I feel, man. Just just go for it, bro. I'm glad. I'm very happy for you, bro. Thanks. Like you new in the game, but you're not new to music, and you just have so much time. And I'm not. I'm not trying to gas you up or nothing. If I am, Come fuck on. it. Come if on. I am, fuck <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta check this guy. His records out, bro. Like. I was speechless, bro. I thought you were Usher on the stage, bro. I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, you have a very good voice. Thanks. So, speaking of that voice, I want to get, you know, before we go, I want to talk about some more, you know, musical, technical stuff. Uh, I don't think, man, well, I guess people still do, you know, in the pop R&B world, but what do you do to practice to, to keep your voice maintained? Like, do you have, like, a certain technique that you do or something there? Man, so I'm like the because it sounds like you have like structure to your, your 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 runs sound good. You know what I'm saying? Like when you sing the the, the motifs, they sound solid all the way. And I'm like, it sounds like you be like practicing like some some soul fed shit. So, <laughs> I okay. First of all, I'm the worst person to ask this question to because <laughs> man, like there's so many things that I could be doing just vocally like taking care of my vocals that have nothing to do with singing at all. Yeah. I should be doing. 
yeah. that ultimately, like, I just kind of really started getting into because I noticed it was a necessity. Like, the yeah, way yeah. you talk, like, one of the worst things you can do for your, for your voice is whisper, but nobody knows that. You I know just found that out. Wow. Like, ex exactly. Like, like, whispering is really bad for your voice. Mm. It's bad for your vocal cords. So, so that's one big thing right there. It's like, well, damn, all right, I can't whisper. So you got to talk with your full voice, mm. but just a little bit lower volume. Like you can't run around screaming, you know what I'm saying? And you have to, okay. your rest is important. Your liquids are important. Drinking, uh, drinking, you know, super cold beverages, that's terrible for you. Drinking alcohol dries your voice out. So, you know, if it's a, a night when you perform it, you'll notice a lot of people, they're just like, you know, performers are like, man, no, nah, I'm good. I don't, I don't, I don't need to drink. Like that's how I am. If I'm gonna perform, I don't want anything. I don't want to drink anything unless it's like room temperature water. I'm that weirdo that, you know, whenever I'm at a restaurant, they're like, sir, what can I get you to drink? I will take water with no ice, room as close to room temperature as possible. Thank you, because I'm, like, actively thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they're like, let me go get that thermometer. I'll be right back. Let me go measure your water temperature. <laughs> I'm act actively thinking about those things because those little yeah. small things have made the difference, you know. Um, yeah. But to your point, uh, to your question, back to your initial question, ultimately, like, when it comes to practicing, man, practice is a big deal. I used to never practice. Like, I've had yeah. shows that I haven't practiced for, and them shits was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, if you want something to be good, you have to put some time and effort into it. So yeah. the show that you saw, I personally feel like that was actually a really, really, really great show of mine. And yeah. the reason why is because I practiced. I had yeah. a full-blown practicing session <laughs> Yeah. here at the house like a couple of days before i was practicing in the mirror with a with my microphone like practicing what i was going to look like on stage and things of that nature like it may feel silly yeah but when you get out there and you feel comfortable because you've been doing the silly shit at home yep like it, it it's worth it at that point when people people want to talk to you on a on a fire ass podcast show because hey. <laughs> because you impress them with your live performance like it, that's what that's what it's about right there you know so yeah that, that's that that's big for me practice is definitely one of those things practice how practice you play how you practice yeah and you know what that i i asked you that because i see it you know what i mean like and i keep it nitty gritty on here you know what i'm saying i see the practice some other performers i don't see the practice that's why i'll be like how long you been doing it? Like, well, you know what I'm saying? I, it, it just shows that you really take time to, you know, to, to mold your craft for the live performances, which is really big. You definitely set a huge first impression for me. And I was like, yeah, that, that kid, you know, he's definitely going places in there. So, um, Salute. what other shows do you have coming up? I mean, you just dropped the single promise, you know, make sure y'all go check that out. God bowl. Follow my artists, you know what I'm saying? Go download that song right now. If you got a girl and you play that song for her, I promise you she's going to stay. I promise you for life. <laughs> what other records or what other shows you got coming up, man? So, I, uh, like I said, I'm, my, my whole focus this year is to continually put out music. So, okay. you, like you called out, like, oh, you got like four records out there right now. That's not enough for me. I want people mm -hmm. to go and every time they look, like, you can go check out once a month. Like, set your reminder, set your clock to it. Once a month, you're going to go out and there's going to be a new Gobble single that's out there. So okay. Forever, so I can't do it no more, you know? So just, like, that's that's a big thing for me. So that is my biggest goal for this whole next year, 2022. Like, I think I have the whole year covered, honestly, with singles. And that's boring that, no that nothing, like, comes up that I'm just like, damn, this will be a way better song. And then I got more to the list. So yeah, just... That's a, that's, a, that's a big deal for me, is making sure that I have songs. Because the worst thing you can do as an artist, let me drop some more knowledge. The worst thing you can do as an artist is if people are like, if you tell somebody you're an artist, and people are like, bet, where can I find your music? And you're like, damn, in my phone? <laughs> you ain't doing yourself no favors. Yeah. So, 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 that, so that's, a, that's a big deal. So having all that stuff in your phone, having that talent, having all that stuff real cool and everything. Yeah but not being able to have that in a place where anybody can consume it, general consumption. Yeah. It's got to be on all platforms. So, and I, I was kind of afraid doing that because I have so many beats, bro. But I keep on, I mean, I don't release a lot of my stuff. That's one thing I'm definitely going to be working on. Like yeah. for all my projects that I actually written, produced myself, even if they have other rappers on it, I'm actually releasing the beats for all of those. Like I really don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I got those copyrights, so I'm just going to release all that. 
And uh, I just find if I was I was laughing earlier because he's like I've ran into that so many times. People like, yo, DJ, hey, can you play my song? I'm like, all right, where can I find it? Uh, <laughs> on my phone. Like, can, can I, you play can, my shit? <laughs> yeah, can I send it to you real quick? I'm like, bro, no, <laughs> we good, bro. Oh, it's a fire record, cuz. Well, if it's fire, I probably would already have it. Hey. You know what I'm saying? So, man. Congratulations on your record, on your records that you got. You got four singles out. That promise record, you know, that's actually one of my favorites right now. I really like that one. Um, keep doing what you gotta do, man. Don't ever give up. Keep grinding. Shouts out to everybody in here who's supporting. You got a lot of fans, man. You got a lot of support. You gained a lot of fans that night. I know for sure. You know what I mean? Like I could just, I see the audience. Like I'm like a people watcher, right? I see the singer. First of all, like I said, when you start singing, I didn't even see you get on the stage. I was eating my pizza, and then I heard your voice. I was like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> okay. That was like, yeah, this this guy. Then I see the people looking at you. I'm like, yo, they like this. This yeah. is this is good shit right here. This is what this is what we need. You know what I mean? So keep up the good work, man. Keep grinding and send me some records so I can spend some, please. I got you, bro. I send me some stuff. We tapped in now, bro. This is yeah. it. Yeah, send me some records, man. Like always, man, this is the Ones and Twos podcast. My boy, God Bold. Check out his record, Promise. And I said this already, but if you got a girl, she going to stay, bro. <laughs> I promise you. If you're trying to get a girl and you 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 know you want something different, impress, you know, you know what, y'all? Okay, check this out. The R. Kellys, the Trey Songs, the Chris Browns, Rihanna, they, they already heard all that. They already heard all that. Okay, try to impress these girls with something different. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Hit them with something different. Hit them with some of that God bold promise. Let's go. I guarantee you, she's gonna be like, Oh boy, you got good taste in that. Yeah, I guarantee <laughs> you that Chris Brown song, them Trey song, I'm gonna dive in. Okay, we don't heard that. We know the lyrics. Okay, play this new record, this promise record, and you sing the lyrics, and you surprised, she's gonna be like, Whoa, she's gonna think you God bold. Hey, let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Yo, man, appreciate you coming on the platform, yeah. man. We tapped in, man. It's an honor to even have you on this platform. Thanks, this is bro. the last episode for the year. 2022, hey. we starting. Hope we can get a physical studio so we can, you know, bring artists in person, have some drinks and some grub. and We speaking you know, it into existence, man. You're going to have that. Yeah, it's coming, man. It's coming. But right now we virtual. We 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 started virtual because you know the whole pandemic thing, and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But now since you know everybody's kind of forgetting about it, sort of, not really, because we just we, we're, we're red yeah. alert right now in Dallas. So, uh, yeah, we we gonna get that studio soon next year. So, yeah, God bold, it's an honor, man. Make sure to follow my artists, man. Hand claps all around. Give me your flowers. Thank you, sir. Always I appreciate it. Likewise, man, like, it's, it's, it's cool because when you get to meet people, sometimes people will talk like they really doing something, but then you actually kind of can see their track record and being uh -huh. able to see what it is that you're accomplishing, man. Like, for you to say, like, yeah, I've been knocking on this door since I was, like, 18, 19 years old, and now yeah. I'm kicking all these doors down and really having to tell, like, having to pick ultimately what I really want to do, like, Man, having residency somewhere is amazing. And having multiple residencies is even better. So like yeah. shout out to you, bro. And shout out to you for this podcast and this opportunity, man. Like this is this is dope, bro. I really appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you, man. Hey, peace out, man. Stay safe and keep grinding, man. Send me those records. As soon as you get off, hey, send me those records. Some, done here. I got something for you. <laughs> I'm in the studio right now, bro. Send me them records, bro. I need to hear them. Let's later. do it. Hey, right. appreciate you, man. All right. Love y'all, man. Appreciate everybody that tapped in too. Yeah, y'all take care, man. Make sure to follow my boy. All right. All right. Later.